For nearly three years, ships run by charities have been operating in the central Mediterranean, rescuing migrants fleeing Libya. You're currently aboard the Vos Prudence. It's the biggest rescue ship in the region and is run by the charity Médecins Sans Frontières. My name is Joe Inwood. I'm a BBC journalist and I spent nearly a month with the MSF team as they pulled about 2,000 people out of small boats. This is a 360 film of one of the rescues to give you an idea of basically what happens. You control the camera and can look around as we go. We've just set off from the port of Reggio Calabria in southern Italy. You can see it disappearing behind us. And we're heading south to the Libyan coast. So, two days have passed, and we are just off the coast of Libya. This is the ship's bridge. The man you can see looking at the charts is Steph van Diest. He is in charge of the operation, and he's just got a call from the authorities in Rome to say that a boat carrying about 200 people has left Tripoli. So the search in is, uh, as you see, we take a binocular and we try to spot uh, the boat, which we know that left uh, Tripoli. It's very hard to find them, although today is a clear day, so uh, the view is, is quite clear. Now, eventually, he does spot one, and they deploy the ribs. Once they find the migrant boats, they try and keep the people on board calm. They make sure the boats are stable and they give life jackets to everyone on board. The man you can hear now is Laith. He is one of the cultural mediators. Eventually the boat comes alongside. If you look down now, you can see it. This is one of the big wooden types. They often have two decks and can carry hundreds of people. One by one, everyone is brought on board. The migrants sleep across all three decks, and with the ship well over capacity, it is pretty crowded. Most of them are from sub-Saharan Africa, but they also rescue people from North Africa, Syria and even Bangladesh. The majority of them are young men, but there were also a hundred or so women on board, as well as over 50 children. They come for a whole host of different reasons. Many are looking for work in Europe, but they are also fleeing war, hunger and terrible abuse in Libya. This is the story of one woman imprisoned by a militia. In that prison, people are beaten to death. If I say people are beaten to death, they torture them to death. They don't care about people. You might be there three days without food before they will come back. Even they'll come at night to choose girls which they want and go take them out and sleep with them anyhow. They just treat us like animals. They don't care. The trip back is over 30 hours and getting everyone fed is a real challenge. Migrants help the crew by handing out ration packs. Even any rather hot and sweaty journalists on board help out. This is how busy you can get at meal times. Everyone gets roped into help. 
anywhere else? As the name Médecins Sans Frontières suggests, this is not just a rescue ship. It's also got the best equipped medical facilities in the area. There is a doctor, a medical coordinator, a nurse, and you're about to hear from Angelina. She's the midwife. She told me a disturbing number of women who come on board have been raped. She often has to tell them that they're pregnant. Yes, the problem of pregnancy is uh, really sad. It's not a, a very happy event, but it's a sad event because it's a result of the violence of the rape. They have depression, they have sadness. And so we need, uh, we need to understand exactly what happened to them and to help. Now, luckily, while we were on board, there weren't any medical emergencies, although a couple of people did need to be medevaced. First, a pregnant woman, picked up by the Coast Guard and taken to Malta. Look up now and you'll see the second medevac underway. The man sitting on the chair in the middle of the deck had a heart condition and so was airlifted to a mainland hospital. At night, everyone takes a turn on watch duty. Walking past the camera now is Steph, the man in charge of the mission. This whole process is controversial, and the MSF team know it. Steph explained the dilemmas they face. Currently, MSF is trapped in a situation that is very difficult because we know we cannot stop the rescues for the moment because many people will die. While at the other hand, we know it's not the solution. If you look around, you see many children. As I said before, we have 53 children on board. If we would not have been there yesterday, these children might have all died. We are not the cause of the problem, neither are we the solution. So it's up to, the, to Europe, to the governments, to find a solution on what to do. As the ship approaches Italy, it is told which port to head to. This time it was Palermo, the capital of Sicily. Getting everyone off can take many hours, even days. Here, Sarah, who was helping coordinate, explains exactly how it works. So we've disembarked the pregnant women, uh, the families, the women and children. They tell us who to disembark, if they're Syrians, because Syrians can apply for asylum, and so we take the Syrians in a group. And then, um, yeah, but these people have families, then they disembark together. Most of the time, they're the ones in families. All sides, both charities and governments, know that the situation in the central Mediterranean isn't sustainable. More than 2,000 people have died this year, with many, many more disappearing into an Italian system struggling to cope. Indeed, since we film with them, MSF and a number of other charities have actually suspended their operations off the coast of Libya. And with the country essentially a failed state, exactly how to stop the flow is a question that no one has yet answered.